You're watching On The Go Travel Show. I'm your host, Janika Palmentier, and today we are in Mexico. We're gonna be traveling through Mexico City, Cabo San Lucas, and Tijuana to go check out some of the best beaches, pyramids, and polcarillas. You don't wanna miss this. Mexico City, breathe and take it all in. Well, it's not the freshest air, but it has improved tremendously since the early 90s. And in the right spots, you can catch the magical smells of fresh tortillas being made mixed with the annoying sounds of constant street organs. With a population over 21 million, it ranks as the largest metropolitan area in the Western Hemisphere. Mexico City is extremely rich in history, so we started off at the sinking Zocalo, where the Aztecs once reigned. Now the reason why Mexico City is sinking at 20 inches a year is because believe it or not, right below us once was an island on Lake Texcoco. So the Aztecs found this island, called it their home, decided it was a little bit too small. So what do you gotta do? You gotta build. So they pounded in wooden stakes into the water, tied it with twine, put in some clay, soil, volcanic rock, it hardened, they continued building and building and building and building and building <laughs> until it is now what you call Mexico City today. Located at the north end of the Zucalo is the Metropolitan Cathedral. Built in sections from 1573 to 1813, it is the largest cathedral in the Americas. The attention to detail inside and out of this incredible structure is astonishing. From the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan to modern day Mexico City, the architecture and engineering here is something you must witness firsthand. The Aztecs were wonderful engineers, but there was still one place that marveled them. at Teotihuacan. Right behind me is the Pyramid of the Sun, which happens to be the third largest pyramid in the world. Built around 100 BC, the city of Teotihuacan is truly one of the wonders of the world. Despite tireless archaeological investigations, very little is known about the origin of this place. We decided to investigate ourselves. So I don't quite have my running shoes on. I have my sandals on because I know it's going to get very, very, very hot here. But we are going to climb the top of the Pyramid of the Sun. <laughs> Run fast, Janika, because in these parts, they practice human sacrifice. Some people were decapitated, while others' hearts were ripped out. This act was considered a dedication when buildings or compounds were expanded or constructed. Behind me are the compounds, which house over 200,000 people. Now, one of the big mysteries here is that at some point, they all vanished without a trace. Many historians believe that climate change played a big part in the disappearance of this city. It was the sixth largest city in the world at the time. I personally think, judging by the city they cultivated, that they worked themselves to death. The reason why they made these steps so steep is because they wanted the workers looking down at their feet, not looking up at the guts. As we climbed, we started to notice how sophisticated this city was, with large streets, artisan quarters, private houses, and monumental religious buildings all throughout the city. It was hard to believe it was built so long ago. After all this climbing today, I'm ready to head back down, check into our hotel, and do a little freshening up. <laughs> Located in the heart of downtown, we decided to stay at the Grand Hotel. The building was built in 1899 and was one of the most exclusive department stores in all of Latin America. In 1968, the Olympic Games were held in Mexico City, and the building was turned into a hotel, giving birth to the Grand Hotel. Your senses seem to magnify as you walk through the hotel, from the songbirds to the natural light shooting through the Tiffany stained glass ceiling. 
Rooms start at $139 and come with a champagne toast every afternoon. Very reasonable, all things considered. If you're lucky enough to get a room that faces the Zuccalo, you can watch the ceremonial takedown of the monumental flag every night. Afterwards, we ventured off into the streets of Mexico City in search of polka. So we're on our way to go try to find a polkeria. I'm so excited because, for one, I've never had it. Two, I'm very parched. I hear this stuff's dangerous, but also I hear it's amazing. So I think we're almost here. We need to turn down this street, turn down that street, and we're there. Polke's consumption is limited to the central highlands of Mexico. It's very hard to distribute due to its delicate fermentation process and short shelf life. So we stepped into Dulistas Polkeria to try it out for ourselves. No, el pulque lleva un proceso para su elaboración. Hay que sembrar una planta, un maguey, un cactus. Eh, eh, es un maguey eh, pulquero, el cual hay que dejar crecer cuando está en edad adulta. Hay que formarle un hoyo en medio y ahí empieza a producir aguamiel. El pulque se produce por fermentación del aguamiel. Traditional pulquerías tend to be like clubs with closed memberships, with casual visitors ignored or sometimes stared at. Frequent visits and large consumptions of the drink tend to win acceptance. We had no problem winning acceptance. Where's yours? <laughs> Whoa! The fermentation process seems to be more of an art than a science. Fathers pass down their trade secrets from generation to generation. Janiga got the opportunity to try some pulque right out of the fermentation vat. This is just straight up pulque. No flavors. This is the original. Este es el pulque. Eh, pulque. So, <laughs> okay, so, he says I'm in trouble. So cheers. Se vale hacer gestos. <laughs> she makes it look so good. All in all, after the pulque is flavored and served, it really is a delightful treat. The only thing is, you have to make a trip here to try it. Woo! That was fun. I honestly think I was a little overserved, though. I think I had too many pulques. It's time to go. After leaving the pulqueria, we randomly met Houston and Jonathan, who had lived in Mexico City for some time. They offered to take us out on the Plaza Garibaldi. Mariachis, cowboys, and cockfights. How many different ways can we say yes? Ya estoy curado, anestesiado, ya me he olvidado de ti. Hoy me despido de tu ausencia, ya estoy en paz. Ya no te espero, ya no te llamo, ya no me engaño. Hoy te he borrado de mi paciencia, hoy fui capaz. Mexico City was truly electrifying. It's now time for us to get out of the city and head to the coast. tropical deserts, Cabo San Lucas. Cabo's known for having some of the best all year round weather with little rain, although we did have a little rain last night, that's not gonna stop us from having some fun. Cabo's known for having some of the best beaches, scuba diving, and of course, you know, the party. Let's go have fun. Cabo San Lucas, English translation, would you like to buy this trinket? Aside from the countless salesmen asking you if they can date your sister, which she's obviously your girlfriend, Cabo is a beautiful place. A city lined with shops, restaurants, and hotels. We decided to get off land and onto the water. All right, it's time for us to go go check out the arch, which is one of Cabo's most famous landmarks. It's uh, it's right here on the Sea of Cortez. El Arco Cabo San Lucas is a 200-foot granite rock situated at the tip of Baja California. This spectacular natural shape was carved by strong ocean currents. Centuries ago, the arch was used as a hiding place by pirates who would ambush merchant ships headed towards the west coast. After checking out the arch, we figured we'd dive in and see what was swimming below us. Oh, buddy. 
We're gonna go check out Cabo Wabo Cantina. If you know anything about Cabo, Cabo Wabo Cantina has got his own tequila. Founded by the Red Rocker himself, Sammy Hagar, Cabo Wabo Cantina is a constant hotspot. Hagar began selling his patrons handmade tequila he had commissioned from a family owned distillery in the state of Jalisco. Word traveled back to the States and the tequila was an instant success. This place can go bananas. But the most impressive thing we noticed was the respect that the locals and employees had for Sammy Hagar, serving up wobbleritas and giving back to the local community. This place was all right by me. Great place, it's amazing this place. We've been in Cabo for 25 years now. A great bar for locals and tourists in Cabo. What's up, boys? Janika wasn't gonna leave without a few shots of tequila and trying their famous wobberita. Wow. Wow, that's wow, Rita. That's that's awesome, actually. Cabo Wabo, Wabo Rita is good. You know the the blue drink that you know you see drinking in the bar, the blue I one, the Wabo Rita. Wabo Rita. It's our version for the margarita. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's very tasty, like, by oh, the way. Yeah, I very much enjoyed it. Sip it and drink it. It's, you know, it's making it in a shaker. You know, like a martini. You know. You should have seen how yeah, I shook good. that sucker. Yeah. Yeah. I popped the top off. Actually, it flung and it hit another glass, and I don't oh, know what happened. That's the power of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> it's the power of the Cabo Wobble tequila, I'm telling you. I gotta say, we had a great time inside Cabo Wobble Cantina. Sammy Hager is definitely doing it correct. Two stories, live band, margaritas, what more could you want? Awesome. All right, let's go get into more trouble in Cabo. There are no shortages of bars and nightclubs in Cabo, so we hit the streets, kissing babies, and lighting bars on fire. Another wild night in Cabo. It was time for us to move up the Baja Peninsula, check out what they call the city of tomorrow, Tijuana. Welcome to Tijuana, tequila, sexo, marijuana. Oh, welcome to Tijuana, con el cuello de Maya. Many people are scared of TJ and often skip through it on their way down to Baja. Those people are missing out on some great spots, like Hotel Caesars. After asking many people where the Caesar salad was created, many of them said Rome. Well, that's not quite the case. It all started right here in 1927 at Caesars in Tijuana. Head waiter Armando Villegas has been making the Caesar salad here for 30 years and was kind enough to show us around. He explained the origin of Caesars and introduced us to almost every table. Everyone here is family, literally. We even met the granddaughter of Chef Santini, the creator of the Caesar salad. It's my grandfather and he, well, he was a chef when Gardini owned this, hop, this restaurant, actually. And he remembered his mother by doing the salad. And when he came here, he, he started in the, the salad. That's why and Gardini was the owner of the restaurant. Okay. That's why he stayed with the patent. Between Santini and Caesar Cardini, they had truly created a legendary salad. Armando showed us how he makes the Caesar tableside. Start with anchovies, a little garlic, Dijon mustard, a coddled egg with style, of course, lime, ground pepper, Worcestershire sauce, Parmesan cheese, mix it up, and let Janika add the olive oil. It's one of the customs that we have here, you know. Arriba. All the way, all, oh. just go all the way up. Okay. Go like that. Oh, Woo, tell me when. Yeah? Yeah. Done deal. Yeah. Okay. A little more mixing and add the romaine lettuce. So they're not chopped like uh, no, a they're lot not. of Caesars are. No, they're not. We used to tell the, the customers to eat it like a taco. Okay. Not to use a knife, not to use a fork. Just go like a taco. Like a taco. Finish it off with a crouton and some cheese. And voila. That's how it was made, you know. We're gonna toss this bad boy away. Yeah. Get your <laughs> napkin and start Got working the napkin, with it. Napkin, I'm ready to get Call, messy. Uh, yeah, no, and don't get messy. Just work with it. Okay. <laughs> Try not to. <laughs> okay. All right. Enjoy Here it. Here we go. I'm pretty sure you're gonna like it. All this, right. This is something different. That's the way it's gotta be eaten. Holy cow. How do you like it? Mm. 
I don't even think words can describe how good the Caesar salad is. We didn't want to leave, but it was time to head down the coast and see what else Baja has to offer. So our friend Nate has lent us this beautiful beach house, 38 kilometers south of the border. Well, if you don't have a friend named Nate, I have the perfect place for you. It's called Las Rocas. Just south of Rosarito and tucked in on the cliffs under the massive statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Las Rocas is the perfect place to stay in Baja. Great restaurants and great amenities, including two remarkable pools. Room prices are reasonable too. In the, in the summertime it's more expensive, but in the winter we had a, a good rate, like starting for 69, 79 plus tax. Oh, that's in not some bad of the all. rooms in, in the winter is including the breakfast too. Okay. Uh, in the summertime is Friday or Saturday where most of them sold out. They have to make a reservation in advance around three or four months in advance. This place is popping. Yeah. This place is popping. <laughs> this place can get busy, but there are times when you can catch it all to yourself. You guys have an amazing spa here. Yes, uh, most of the people, it's a good spa in the area. This is one of the best ones in, in Rosarito. Alfredo told us that people make reservations at the spa up to six months in advance. They must be doing something right. And any, any kind of scrubs or anything, any facials? Body scrubs, massage, uh, pedicure, manicure, oh, or a margarita pedicure. Oh, what is that? Yeah, this is, we, we can do that. <laughs> what, what is the margarita pedicure? Oh, we do the pedicure, they give you a margarita. Okay, so, oh, hey, it sounds like my type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Janika opted for the more traditional massage. I'll take the margarita and enjoy the ocean view. Look at this view. You can hear the ocean. Doesn't get any better than this. Las Rocas Spa. After Janika's tough day at the office, we are in need of a good meal. If you're looking for some street food, there's some really good tacos at Taco Surf. Let's go check it out. I've been coming here since my first trip to Baja 14 years ago, and it never disappoints. It's taco time. Located just off the Mexico One and right next to K38 Surf Shop, it's a must if you're in Baja to stop for a few tacos. Mm. Can you just taste it? Just imagine carne asada inside, freshly made guacamole. Fresh salsa, fresh jalapenos that are hot as... <laughs> From the carne asada to the El Pastor, this place is hands down the best taco I've ever had. From a scale of 1 to 10, this taco would definitely get a 10, without a doubt. It's hot. It's hot right when you get it. It's freshly made right in front of you. All the ingredients are freshly made. It's phenomenal. After nine tacos apiece, we decided to head farther south to take a peek at one of the largest blowholes in North America and check out the oldest bar in Baja. Just south of Ensenada, La Bufadora is a marine geyser that spits seawater up to 100 feet. This is a result of waves forcing air into a sea cave, causing the air to be trapped with only one way out, exploding upwards. If you stand too close, you're bound to get wet. We managed to stay dry, and later that afternoon, made our way to Ensenada. All right, well, I made it to Husang's, and um, I found these strapping men right here. They're gonna take me on inside, we're gonna go try some margaritas. Margaritas? Uh, mag hey, margaritas, mag let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the margarita was created right here by bartender Don Carlos Orozco. He was experimenting with tequila, orange liqueur, and lime served over ice in a salted rim glass. This is legit. 74 years ago, Margarita Hinkle was sitting at the same rail and was the first to try this cocktail, giving birth to the margarita. So this margarita was created in 1941. And uh, Husong's has been here since 1892. Can you believe that? 
Hoosongs is a fantastic bar that welcomes you with constant mariachis and perfect margaritas. It was a great spot for us to wrap up our trip and reflect on the last few weeks traveling through Mexico. From the pyramids of Teotihuacan to the beaches of Cabo San Lucas to the culinary secrets of Tijuana, Mexico is truly a magical place. So get out there and travel, blaze your own path, get out of your comfort zone, and enjoy what the world has to offer. Thanks for watching On The Go. We hope you enjoyed your travels with us through Mexico. Till next time, I'm Janika Palmentier. Adios.